so again, let's go ahead and draw the triangle. What app is that? Is that just a calculator? Yeah. Or is that a and website? Oh, okay. Whoa, so <laughs> let's do A, B, and actually let's put C here. And uh, let's put A here. Why? Why not? Again, as I mentioned, I don't, you guys don't need to always have to use your triangles like that, right? The only thing I told you is the least for the angle side side, I wanted our triangles all to be drawn like in that uniform way so we can understand the ambiguous case. But in this example, um, we, it doesn't really matter how the angle is drawn. However, you guys recognize we can't use the law of sines here, right? We don't have a ratio to use the law of sines. We are going to have to use the law of cosines. Now, the last, we, have, we don't have a ratio, a side length with its angle, right? To use the law of sines, you have to have a ratio. So we're going to have to use the law of cosines. Now, last formula that we just did for the law of cosines, we had to know all the three sides, right? We plugged in all three of the sides to find the missing angle. Well, we don't know all three sides, right? And again, don't make this mistake. Don't do the Pythagorean theorem, right? Okay, because obviously then we know that you're definitely not paying attention. It's not a right triangle. You can't apply the Pythagorean theorem. How do you know it's not right? a right triangle? How do you know it is? Exactly. Exactly. So don't <laughs> apply the Pythagorean theorem because the Pythagorean theorem can only be used when you have a right triangle. But you don't know if it's either, so it could be So right. why would you do it though, All right? right? <laughs> um, so anyways, our formula, what we're going to want to do is go ahead and find the missing side length. So the formula here is a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2 times a times b times the cosine of a. Now, do we need to solve for a? Do we need to solve for the missing side a? No, we already have missing side a. So the formula that's on our formula sheet is not really helpful right now, is it? So what side do we need to find? We need to find c. So if I have the formula for, that's given in terms of A, and I need to solve for C, what should I do? Just switch it around. You guys think I'm crazy, but you'll be surprised on how many people are, get completely lost at this stage of the problem on their quiz. A squared equals B times C minus, I wrote this wrong, sorry about that. Where did I get that? Times cosine of A, OK. OK. So now I can just go ahead and plug this in and solve. So we're going to do the same thing. Um, now again, in this case, it, we don't, we're not really finding the like larger side. Like in this case, guys, we only have one option, right? So let's just go ahead and find C. Um, now, if you guys want to get full credit for your equation, I'm going to want you to plug in your information. So let's do this as 7 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this into our calculator, see if you guys get the same answer as myself. No, I just swapped the variables. I didn't isolate C. I just swapped the variables. Because they're all interchangeable, right? We could label this triangle any way we wanted to. Because eventually you need to solve for A, B, and C, right? OK. Yeah, so you can just. No. So why write down the same equation for all the different variables when all the variables can be interchanged, right? So that's why you're only given one, ver one equation. You just need to make sure you can interchange them. All right, now I'm going to finish off. Guys, as I mentioned, if you didn't get the right answer, I'll walk around after I'm done and check your work and help you out along. But I would like you just to pay attention because there is a couple important things to go on here. Uh, now, on the next example, so we found the missing side length, or at least I found the missing side length. So what can we do here? Now we have, a missing now we have two missing angles, right? 
Now, really, all we need to do is find one missing angle. So the idea comes in, guys, if you can just hold off. I'm, I'm almost going to be done. Then you guys can work with this for the rest of the class, right? Remember, we're done after this. Yes. So let me finish this, and then you guys, I'll help you guys out, and you're done. So what I want you guys to see is we need to figure out either A or B. Now, could you go back to, now that we have this missing side length, could we go back and use the law of cosines again to find A or B? Yes, and we just did that, right? We just did that formula last, last example. So if that's what you feel comfortable with, you're OK with using the law of cosines, use the law of cosines again to find the missing angle A or B. If you prefer the law of sines, again, we have to just be careful. You can do the law of sines here. You just have to be careful because, again, remember the law of sines only gives you the acute angle. It doesn't warn you about the possible obtuse angle there. So to avoid, see, being right now, I just randomly drew this triangle. We don't really know if there's an obtuse angle. Could there still be an obtuse angle in this triangle? Yeah. Yes. So when we do sine inverse, that's not going to guarantee that it's not going to give us this possible obtuse angle. So what we want to do to ensure that we're not going to have an obtuse angle is only use the law of sines to find the missing um, angle for the smallest angle. So we have two missing angles, A and B. Based on the opposing side length, which of them is smaller? A, a right? Is that what I said? Like A has a smaller side. So wouldn't it, make, wouldn't it be impossible then for A to be possibly ob obtuse if B is bigger than A? Because then you can't have two obtuse, and then you'd have two obtuse angles for a triangle, which wouldn't make sense, right? So if you are going to use the law of sines, you need to use the law of sines to find missing angle A. So we'd say sine of A all over 5 is equal to the sine of 42 degrees all over stored answer C. Make sure you store that C. So we're going to do store alpha C. And then I can just solve for A from here. So I'm just going to do 5 times the sine of 42 divided by stored C. And then I'll do sine inverse of that answer. And I get 45.53, or I can just rewrite that as 45 degrees. Now again, I'm just still going to want to store that um, as my, I'm going to store this as alpha A, just because I don't like using, oops. So I'm going to store this as alpha A. And then the last thing I want to do is, we still, last thing we need to do is find B. So B is 180 degrees minus 42 degrees, which was given to us, minus our stored answer A, which I just found. I don't want to use 45 degrees. I'm going to use my stored answer. So I do 180 minus um, 42 minus 45. And I get B equals. Oops, I forgot. 180 minus 42 minus alpha A. Oh, Stop. Hmm. Huh? Hmm. Oh, 45 does round up, right? Thank you. Yes. Good catch. Because then this rounds to not 92, right? Yeah. So real quick, shh, last thing I just want to mention to you guys, and then I'm done. Um, I want you guys to notice, to solve for C, first of all, did I provide a triangle on this problem? Yes. Did I provide an equation for C and then get provide the answer? Yes. yes. Yeah. For A, did I provide an equation and then provide you the answer? For B, did I provide an equation and provide an answer? Yes. So for every variable that you are solving for, make sure you're solving an equation. I know you guys can do a lot of the work on your calculator. The last thing I want you to do is say, oh, here's my, here's my uh, triangle, and then here's all the answers. Don't worry, I did them in my calculator. That's not going to work. You need to provide an equation. You don't need to show me step by step all of the work. I'm OK with you guys using your calculator, but I'm not OK with you not providing where, what equation those variables came from. OK? I did that in chemistry. Did you see that? Yes. So we, we could use law of sines to find the I did. I used law of sines. I mean law of cosines. So yeah, if you didn't want to do law of sines, you could have done law of cosines. I got that. No, but it's fine. Do we have to do 180 minus 42 minus stored A? Or do you have to do law of sines? You could, but I mean, that was really easy, wasn't it? Yeah. 